So next example here, our limiting reagent scenario. All right, limiting reagent. Um, if I have a chemical reaction where, for this case, I have um, nitrogen and hydrogen coming together to form ammonia, right? It's a, the stoichiometry says one of these for every three of these. But if I have, for example, two of these and three of these, what would happen? Um, two nitrogens and three hydrogens? Yeah. So let's draw nitrogen gas. Well, let's just draw it like this. Well, yes, yeah, draw nitrogen gas like that. There's nitrogen gas, and let's draw um, hydrogen gas. like that, okay? So if I said I have three nitrogen gases and three hydrogen gases, what would my products be? Um, would you add them up? Well, I need to make, in the end, a nitrogen with uh, three hydrogens on it, right? You need to make those clusters. And if this is what I'm provided to start off with, right? What am I going to be limited by? Well, you got six nitrogens, right? Yeah, I got six nitrogens. So I can say one, two, three, four, five, six. So you need six times three, 18 hydrogens? I would, wouldn't I? For every nitrogen, I need three hydrogens. So one, two, three, four, five, six, six times three, 18 uh, hydrogens are necessary. How many do I have? Um, you only have six. One, two, three, four, five, six, that's right. And so there, and I've already used up three, one, two, three. So the hydrogens would run out and I would only get two ammonia and then these would be left over and they're not going to be separate like that. They're going to be um, together. They're going to be unused, right? And so if I had three nitrogens and three hydrogens, in the end, I would still only get two ammonia, and I would get um, two of these nitrogens because I know they would just be left open. Two of them wouldn't be able to react. And so in this case, we would say the limiting reagent was which one, Fred? Um, you had nitrogen left over, so you ran out of hydrogen. That's right. Hydrogen ran out. So hydrogen would be the, the limiting reagent. All right, so here's a nice problem where we've been given a gram of each of these reactants, and we want to find out what the theoretical yield of water is, and we want to identify the limiting reagent. Okay? Now, it's nice of them to ask for what the limiting reagent is because um, it helps us know it's a limiting reagent problem. And if it's a limiting reagent problem, that's an indication that what? What do we have to do, Fred? You have to solve it twice. That's right. You have to solve the problem twice. Okay? Uh, finding out how much water we would expect with one gram of the calcium hydroxide and how much water we would expect with one gram of the HCl. All right? So, again, it's nice that they asked us to tell told us it's a theoretical yield. And identifying which one will produce the least water will identify which one is the, the limiting reagent, okay? So, uh, if we want to know how many grams of water we'll get, we're going to perform the problem twice because we are asked how, much, how many grams of water we're going to get with um, one gram of calcium hydroxide and one gram of hydrochloric acid. We've got some um, molar masses here, which is nice. So 74 grams of calcium hydroxide 
is going to give us one mole of calcium hydroxide. And then um, for every mole of calcium hydroxide, we go to the land of the moles because we can relate the moles. What's the relationship? Two to one mole of, or two to two. Two to two? No, one to two. One mole of calcium hydroxide goes two moles of water. And we see that here in the stoichiometry. There's one mole of this for every two moles of that, right? And then we go from moles of water to grams of water, 18 grams for every mole, all right? Grams of HCl goes to moles of HCl, and moles of HCl goes to moles of water. What's that relationship? Two to two. Okay, can I put one to one? Is that all right? Yeah, it's the same. All right, and then grams of 30, uh, HCl is 36.5 for every mole of HCl. All right, and then we go one mole of water is 18 grams of water. Okay, so we got 1 divided by 74 times 2 times 18. And that gives us uh, 0 0.486 grams of water, theoretically, if, if we used up all of the calcium hydroxide. And then if we go with 1 gram of HCl, 1 divided by 36.5 um, times 18, that gives us 0 0.493. Double check on that one. 1 divided by 36 times 18, yep. 0.45. So what does that tell or 0.493? What does that tell us, Fred? Well, it tells you that calcium hydroxide is the limiting reagent. Very good. This is the smallest amount. So that means the calcium hydroxide is only going to be able to give us that much. If we had more calcium hydroxide, then we could get more. We have enough HCl to get more. Calcium hydroxide is going to be limiting us. So the theoretical yield is the 0.486 grams, and calcium hydroxide is our, our limiting reagent. Good. Um, we just did this one. So we can look at that one in the previous one. How many grams of NO can form when 30 grams of ammonia and 40 grams react according to this reaction? Okay. So here we're looking for what? Mass of NO, grams of NO. Good. Grams of NO. And I know it's a limiting reagent problem because? Because that's what we're doing right now. Yeah, but we also know because they tell us masses of two of the reactants. And that has to be something that you begin to recognize because it's going to um, not always be asked directly of you what's the limiting reagent, right? Sometimes the question might just be how much of this do we expect? And if you don't recognize that it's a limiting reagent problem, then um, you're going to not know to solve it twice, right? All right, so I'm going to start with uh, 30 grams of ammonia. Is that okay for this one? Okay. And then I can just go grams of ammonia to moles of ammonia, and then moles of ammonia to moles of NO, and then moles of NO to grams of NO. Okay, so ammonia, 17. What's the relationship? Four to four. Okay, 4 to 4, I could have done 1 to 1, right? And then grams of NO? 30. That's how many grams there are per mole. Okay, excellent. And then if I want to go with 40 grams of oxygen here. All right. Um, and then for every uh, 32 grams, it's oxygen gas, right? Yeah. So 32 grams of oxygen gas gives us 1 mole of oxygen gas. And then moles of oxygen gas can relate to moles of NO. How? Oh, that's 4 to 5. So 4 moles of NO come from 5 moles of oxygen gas. Okay, good. And then I'm in moles of NO, and I want to go to grams of NO. Okay, so that's, uh, again, 30 grams of NO for every mole of NO. So 40 divided by 32 times 4 divided by 5 times 30. Okay, um, so... I'm going to do the top one here first. 30 divided by 17 times 4 divided by 4 times 30. Okay, so we got 
grams of NO, and the other one, 40 divided by 32, times 4 divided by 5, times 30. That's 30 grams. Whoops, 30 grams of NO. So, what does that tell us? You're only going to get 30. Good. 30 grams of NO is going to be my um, result because I have identified it as the limiting reagent and the oxygen is my limit. Sorry, oxygen is a limiting reagent and this is the um, amount of NO I can get given that amount of oxygen. All right, titrations. We've already done a little bit of titrations in homework, um, but a titration, and in class a little bit, but a titration is just a reaction where the amount of um, a given reactant is known, but the amount of the other is not, or something about the other reactant isn't known. And I know I have something to tell me when the reaction has come to completion, so I can control the reaction by having an amount of one thing and then slowly adding the other until I reach an endpoint. So I need an indicator as well. Oftentimes the indicator is some sort of a color change. So in this case, I have some acid here and some base here. I have my initial volume of base that I monitor and I keep adding until I get to my final volume and I recognize my final volume because I have something that changes color. An indicator can tell me that the reaction has come to completion. Okay. So, in a titration uh, problem, you use the stoichiometry of an equation, but you, so you need to have an equation. Um, usually, you're dealing with mole, molar concentrations of the different substances. All right, so we can, I mean, it, there's the only problem with these reactions, the only thing, or these questions, the only thing that's really different is um, we see the word titration, and it might bother us a little bit, okay? Uh, but other than that, it's, it's pretty much straightforward. We're looking for the concentration of HCl here. So I want moles of HCl for what? For every liter. That's right, for every liter of HCl, okay? So I start with, um, um, I can see that I want liters of HCl on the bottom. And so that 25 milliliters of HCl is probably going to go on the bottom at some point. But I can start with the 1.3 moles of calcium hydroxide for every one liter of solution. And that's the calcium hydroxide solution, right? And I see that I needed 0 0.075 liters of the, of the calcium hydroxide solution. So now I'm in moles of calcium hydroxide, and I can go from moles of calcium hydroxide to uh, moles of HCl. Okay. Um, what's the relationship here? Um, we need to write an equation, but I'm pretty sure it's 2 to 1. All right. You're getting good at seeing that HCl, for example, donates 1, but calcium hydroxide has 2 hydroxides, right? So the product here is what? Calcium chloride. CaCl, and I got to put the two there because I know that's what calcium chloride looks like. And what? Water. That's good. So there's two waters and two HCLs, right, to make sure everything's balanced. So two to one there. Okay. So 1.3 times 0 0.075 times two moles of HCl. And I can go from moles of HCl to uh, well, liters of HCl. I don't know. Let's see. I have moles of HCl. I want that up top. I want to leave that. I want liters of HCl on the bottom. These are crossed out. The moles are now moles of HCl. So I just need to put my liters of HCl down here at the bottom, which is going to be 0 0.02 liters of HCl. Is that okay if I convert the 20? Oh, it's 25. 0.025. I just convert it like that. Is that okay? Yeah, that's okay. I'm good at that now. Okay. Good. So 1.3 times 0 0.075 times 2 times or divided by 0 0.025. Okay, so 7.8 molar HCl is what we got. Good, 7.8 molar HCl. Way to go.
Here's another scenario. A sample of metal ore is reacted. Now, ore just means some dirt, some soil that contains a, a, a significant concentration of uh, metal of interest. All right. And the metal that we're looking at here is what? Iron. Yeah. And so we put 25 mils of 2.3 molar HCl, and we want to know what mass of iron there is. So what goes to the right of our equal sign? Grams of iron. All right, grams of iron. What do I want to start with here? Oh, the molarity of the HCl. 2.3 moles of HCl for every one liter of solution. And then I go moles of HCl to moles of iron. Is that okay? Yeah, you can do that. And then you can go moles of iron to grams of iron. Okay. Uh, and then I just have liters of solution here of the HCl. It required 25. Okay, so 0 0.025 milliliters of the HCl was required. So there's my, sorry, liters. I converted that to liters in my head, right? <laughs> so moles of HCl are gone. Moles of iron. Moles of iron here, grams of iron. What's the molar mass of iron? Where are you, periodic table? Let's see. Molar mass of iron? Well, Google's still not working. So if we do our calculations here, we should get 1.6 grams of iron ore in that mixture. Okay, good. <clears throat> so here's another one. I'll let you guys work on this one at home. And uh, then we will let Fred show us how to do it. Why do I always have to do it? I do a lot. I do most of it. Yeah, I guess so. All right. Hopefully you had a chance to work on this one. What should we do, Fred? Um, start off with the 15 milliliters this time. We can start off with the 15 milliliters. That's the way they started off in the slide last time. So that's a good spot. Well, first we want to find out how what the, what goes to the right of our equal sign, though, right? Oh, yeah. Grams of um, carbonate? Yeah, the carbonate content of a rock is determined. So we want grams of carbonate, CO3, 2 minus. Okay, so if we start off with uh, 0 0.0125 liters of our solution, and every one liter of that solution has 3.5 moles of H2SO4, is that right? Okay, I got it. And then you go from moles of H2SO4 to moles of carbonate. Uh-huh. Now, it'll bother some people to see that there's no moles of H2SO4 in here. Right? Where? Why aren't there any moles of H2SO4? Oh, because... I don't know. Why not? It looks like this is... See how these are just ions? It looks like this is the a net ionic equation. Right? And so, um, the sulfate ion looks like it was a spectator in this reaction. Okay. So what do we do? Well, we can go from moles of H2SO4 to moles of hydrogen ion. All right. And for every one mole of H2SO4, there's two moles of hydrogen ion. I can just look at the H2SO4 and the moles of hydrogen ion. And then I can go from, with the equation, moles of hydrogen ion to moles of carbonate. And then I can go from moles of CO3 to minus to grams of CO3 to minus. Okay, so what's the relationship here between moles of carbonate and moles of H2, H plus ion? One for every two. Okay, one to two. That's our stoichiometry there, right? Yeah. And we said there's two moles of H plus in every mole of H2SO4. What about this one? Uh, how many grams of carbonate? Uh, 16, 16, that's 32, plus one more, 48, plus 12. Yes, yeah, so... 48 plus 12, 60 grams of carbonate for every mole of carbonate. So 0.125 or 0 0.0125, that's our 12.5 milliliters, times the 3.5, that's the moles per liter, times 2, there's 2 moles of H plus ion for every mole of our acid, and then uh, time divided by 2 because two moles of that required for every mole of carbonate, and then times 60 for our mass of carbonate. So 2.625 plus 
Hmm. Did we do something wrong there? Um, I don't think so. 0 0.0125 times 3.5 times 60. 2.625. Hmm. Maybe I got the mass of the, uh, and the carbonate content of rock is determined by the, uh, what mass? Oh, they're looking for mass of calcium carbonate. Oh, okay. So, for every mole of carbonate, we get one mole of calcium carbonate. And then from every one mole of calcium carbonate, we go grams of calcium carbonate. And that is 100.1 grams for every mole. All right. So, instead of the 60, we multiply by 100. So 0 0.0125 times the 3.5 times the 2 divided by the 2 times the 100. 4.38. All right, so that is one of our answers. Okay, good stuff.